Hmm. So, what to do, what to do, what to do. Um, so, Pro Cricket Charger, SMD Soldering Challenge, oh, that's the Flight Controller, Spy Driver. I could play with the Spy Driver. Um, Misery Edition. Um, stringy will be fun. I think I'm going to save that. Um, I don't think I'm up for doing any FPGA work. Um, that could be fun. Um, there's oh, that's the other pie. Uh, it's in here. Oh yeah, a couple of airboards. The Engineering Superhero and the peas that I need to get parts for and populate. And there's the chant and the cordwood three. I need to get the other cordwoods. That's what I need to get. Um, what's this? Oh, this is the pie cell. Right. Oh yeah, and there's this, the um, the uh, breadboard power supply, could make that, that would be a nice handy little thing to have. Oh, this is the one bit squared flight controller. And then there's the woodlar, which is <clears throat> a... Uh, an homage to Manhattan style um, soldering with it coming up out of the board. Um, and what's this? Ah, piss off. Thanks to Lucky Resistor, an angry barking proximity detector. That'd be good for putting on your desk at work and turning on when you don't want people to come around. <laughs> Anyways, uh, where to begin, where to begin, where to begin? I, I, let's build this whiteboard. Because there's a couple of things that I want to do that are kind of whiteboardy. And that will be fun. And quick. And then maybe some SMD challenge soldering. Which will also be fun. I have a weird idea of what fun is. Okay, so, whiteboard. What do we have in store for us? Something tells me we've got... Well, something tells me. We have a power supply that um, is probably going to be based on an LM317 voltage regulator so that you can put power into it. And, yeah, so there's that. Some diodes for protection some LEDs for indicating what's what, a battery holder, and a pin header, LM317 voltage regulator, and a trimmer probably to adjust the voltage out. Uh, is it a LM317 adjust? Yeah, I think it is. So, um, voltage... An LM317. What does that look like? That's a circuit. It, um, if I remember correctly, and this is going from memory, so take it with a grain of salt. We have an input, an output, and an adjust. So uh, you put a resistor on the adjust and you put a resistor here and it's this voltage divider that determines what the output of the LM317 is going to be. <clears throat> so let's just check that. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I thought. Um, so, where did I put my pen? Oh, it's right here. No, that's not my pen. So yes, and if you make this an adjustable um, 
resistor, then you can change the output voltage relative to the input voltage. A couple of other things that you need to do. You need to, well, need. Um, it's a good idea to put some filter filtering on your input. It's a good idea to put a um, uh, a, uh, a diode that prevents a short circuit here, but allows conduction here, just in case this is an inductive load and you don't want to feed back feed um, voltage into your your LM317. So if you've got an inductive load here and it cut the power and then all of a sudden it starts producing energy, it will this bypass um, uh, diode will allow any EMF here to go back that way. Um, filtering your output is also a good idea. And um, yeah, that's basically how those circuits get built. Take the uh, mouse bites off. Try not to aerosolize the uh, board too much. So don't, once you've done some smoothing, don't give it a good and blow on it in order to clear off your your file or anything like that because fiberglass um, you don't want to give yourself micro abrasions in your lungs because that's scar tissue in your lungs man oh that's nasty nasty so this little guy here is dual purpose it will form leads around uh, at, a, at a particular spacing. So if you pop a device on here and then bend the leads around it, it will um, form the leads to a particular um, gap width. And that gap width is conveniently um, spaced to bridge one hole on your board or across the center. Now this is a simple way of attaching 3.3 um, uh, 3.3 volts. If you want 3.3 volts, you can do that. So that gives you a uh, some V plus and some ground pins to work with. Or you've got an adjustable voltage um, regulator here, and then you've got some uh, you've got ground on this side V plus on that side and then you can take power off of there so the usual 317 LM317 sort of setup you see this on all kinds of uh, things um, we've got our voltage regulator that goes over here we've got um, some protection diodes and we've got our volt oh sorry that's not our voltage regulator the voltage regulator goes here um, that's our trim pot, so we can adjust the voltage um, depending. And then, what do we? What else do we need? We need some diodes. So there's a also a possibility to put a fuse in here, and that I believe is this guy here. Yeah, F. So there will be a fuse that goes on here. Sorry, you can't hardly see any of that, can you? So there'll be a fuse, and then you've also got um, a uh, a current limiting resistor and some spots to put some LEDs so that you can use those as you know you don't have to take up space here with indicator LEDs for what you're trying to prototype. So yeah it's all very nice. A um, couple of filter caps, uh, sorry a few filter caps for the 317 circuit um, and then um, a reverse polarity uh, protection diode for the rails of the power supply and the back protection diode for back um yeah back for protection diode some header pins and that is the kit nice and simple so um one thing i did want to say so 
these, while very incredibly handy, can also cause a bit of grief if you're not careful about putting a little daub of solder in the center here so that it provides some uh, profile uh, as the as the batteries expand and contract when they get um, when they're used they can lose connect connectivity because the um, silk screen provides some thickness and then if the battery is flat or turns concave then it will pull away from the uh, even though that there's uh, some pressure being uh, exerted on here it will pull away from the uh, the center pad so I always put a little dab of solder in the center just um, basically tin this this area and it helps with battery connections so yeah let's put her together oh that looks just too crusty I think I have to clean up my uh, flux syringe okay there we go um, all soldered up now we just focus now we just need to get some isopropyl on there to clean off the flux and we should be good to go. Oh, that one's a little starved for solder, but uh, I will let it pass. Okay, so I've got 12 volts coming in and then this pot should adjust all the way up to about, oh well, wow, 2 volt dropout? Or maybe this isn't quite 12. <clears throat> And it should be able to come down quite nicely. I forget what the minimum, but this is one and a quarter volts. We can get a 3.3 and then all the way up to 10 and a half off of that 12 volt nominal. Well, let's leave it at five volts and call it that. It's a nice little build, I think. Very nicely done, Sar. Once again, a uh, useful and very beautiful collection of bits and bobs. Very beautiful. So I could totally see using this for some prototyping and then prototyping with um, that plug-in for adding a coin cell if you're going to be doing any coin cell work. So yeah, yeah, and it even comes with a nice little carrying bag for your doodoblies. If you need to uh, take it somewhere. Very very handy. Thanks, sir. Great kid. Thanks for watching.